Today I'll be reviewing the Sony A95L to the left. The short answer is it's a great TV, but it's overpriced. So smack a like on this video because we did that in under 10 seconds. Again, just spitting it out and getting to the point without wasting your time. Now, I'm doing this review in a very different or rather interesting manner in which I have the LG C1 from 2020, what, 2021 to the right, okay? The reason for this is to show you how incredibly similar these TVs are. We've just simply reached a point of diminishing returns. So you're likely going to hear from other YouTubers and publications alike that the Sony is the king of all TVs. It is just this wonderful breakthrough and the $3,000 entry price is totally justified. But when you investigate those claims and you actually push TVs to their maximum potential, to their limits, you will see a very different story play out. I've noticed that the HDR on the Sony is fantastic, which is wonderful and great. But I also noticed that comparatively to something like the Samsung S95B, it does not beat it out. Then in SDR, where we're basically comparing right now, I've noticed that it just looks way too similar to a really maxed out LG C1. Now, the relevancy of this is this is not the Evo panel. This is W OLED technology and not QD OLED technology. Now, to some people, this might sound like an asinine claim, and it might just be absolutely insane, but this then shows the capability of the calibrators and creators at hand behind these TV settings that, again, are being compared in these videos where they say that Sony is just the best. Because when you know what you're doing, not a knock on anybody, but it's just a fact, when you know what you're doing, you can show what this TV is capable of, what both TVs are capable of. There are going to be limitations, but I'm sorry to say that the Sony is just not on a level to where they are blowing everything on the market away. And I've heard it from so many different people how you're just a Sony hater if you say this. No matter how you try to slice it, the price tag is just the problem here. I think at face value, what Sony tries to offer is really nice. They do give you multiple ways of positioning your television, whether you want it flush to the tabletop or whether you want it elevated so you can put a sound bar underneath. I think that's beautiful. They have a good subwoofer. They have decent mids, but ultimately, comparatively to the competition, they are very tinny and they don't sound very good. Now, Sony uses acoustic surface technology. I don't know if this has something to do with it which again, that's just the, the sound coming from the screen. But I really just, I don't get that same impact at similar levels of volume. You've really got to crank the Sony in order to hear the same levels of kick. And that's a problem. To give you perspective, you would need level 20 to 25 on a Sony TV to be level 15 on something like a Samsung S90C, S95B. That shouldn't happen, but it does. Now, the other thing I want to draw your attention to is the design. It is not a 144 hertz television. It does not have all four ports of HDMI 2.1, and that makes it very limited in the applications you can use, it, or the ways you can use it for gaming specifically, PC gaming. Now, Sony, with their PlayStation 5, they say that this is the perfect TV for PS5, but again, someone like Samsung has motion processing inside of game mode, which takes away from all of the lagginess and just how choppy it would generally look. Then there's another aspect of this. Motion is just bad on the Sony A95L. I've done videos showcasing this to where you can notice horizontal panning being a massive issue. And it's so much so to the point where it's just almost demoralizing that this price tag doesn't just buy you everything the current market has to offer. Maybe I'm a bit pretentious, but I kind of feel like when you show up at a certain price tag, throwing a certain amount of income at a product, it should just do everything. The Sony doesn't do everything. And that is where I have my biggest gripes and my biggest problems with the Sony. Because on the one hand, they try to say we're lens to living room and we're all about a luxury experience. Look at how the LG C1 compares against it. The LG C1 is a W OLED without any QD filter. It doesn't have the same level of brightness. 
And even still with that, it's still every bit as good. I do not like that. I will maybe biasly say that. I, I personally don't like that. I feel like it's a testament of the times where people have allowed social media and its influencers to take over common sense. We are at such a point now where anyone with influence or clout can hop up on social media and say that something that is not better is better and we just eat it up like hotcakes. And we're going to believe them because they have a large number of followers or, you know, subscriber counts. That kind of crap does not matter. And it is at this point that I want to talk just a little bit about something off topic. Status belongs to no man or no person, okay? There is always somebody with more status than you, and there is always somebody that is going to have a very similar status, right? So I don't understand why we are looking at somebody like Sony and saying because they've achieved status, which is what this is, okay, their name, that we are now going to just let them get away with all of the flaws that they have without accurately representing this is very much diminishing return time. We are not seeing the best that we should out of Sony year after year. It's very lazy, and it is at a point where it is irritating and annoying. Now, I'm not saying this because I hate Sony. Quite the opposite. This video is being shot on a Sony A7 IV, and if you don't know the retail price tag of one of those bad boys with a Sony G Master lens, you are more than welcome to look that up. It ain't cheap. The relevancy of saying that is to illustrate I have given this company thousands of my dollars. However, I am understanding that people believe that just because you don't like something about a product that you are bought off and paid off by the opposing brands or whatever. At which point I will say I don't care about any brand. They sure as hell ain't paying my bills. They do not care about me and they do not care about you. And I am not about to hold punches and revealing the truth about what these TVs are actually like because it's about transparency so that buyers can have the information to actually make an informed decision versus helping some desperate guy pay off his mortgage, okay? I don't do that. Now, there are people that do do that, and it's called groupthink. They all kind of band together, share the same ideas because, you know, if they're all in it to market to you, hey, power to them. But I don't really like that kind of thing. Now... That being said, the Sony is a brilliant TV. I think it has wonderful color. It has beautiful highlight placement. And in that way, it is a brilliant TV. It does have a great picture. But that's not the conversation that we have, you know, we have to stop at, that we can stop at. Because if you look at the C1 to the right, it's basically the same thing. And when I can say that, that's the point where it gets a little gross. Because I should never have anything close to what the Sony A95L has on a Sony or on an LG C1 from 2021. And that's the problem. So if you like HDR and you like bright colors and you like vibrancy, the Sony is going to be a great TV if you want the Sony name. If you want, if you truly believe that like Sony is worth it, you're in the Sony ecosystem of products and for whatever reason, I don't know, Bravia Core or their camera just did it for you, then the Sony A95L would almost be a no-brainer for you then because it'll give you that like overpaying feeling of being able to brag, right? I have a Sony A95L and I'm important because my TV was over three grand. If that is you, then by all means, have your bragging rights. But be honest with yourself about the nature of what you're doing, because that's all you're buying at this point, bragging rights. You are not buying the actual best of anything. You are not buying something that is leagues ahead of anything. You are buying an experience that can be got for thousands of dollars less in this case. By my calculation, $2,000 less on average. So with that being the case, I wanted to represent this for those who maybe didn't know. Not for those who have their minds made up. Go enjoy your purchase. I don't know why you're watching this video if you know you want a Sony. But for everybody else, it's really to tell you it's a good TV. It's a solid TV. But this TV really shouldn't be going for more than the Samsung S90C. And honestly, the S95C. The, the price points just don't make sense. And honestly, Sony needs to come down a bit. And they need to get out of the clouds and get back into the game. And if they want to remain in the clouds, then they had better be up there in the clouds so far above everybody else that it just becomes a no-brainer that Sony is superior in every way. Because that is what you are saying effectively when you charge more than the entire consumer market of competitors. And you desire to hold that place without giving us 
an actual perceivable difference that makes you worth that money. Especially as things are inflated and people are struggling now more than ever. Rent is up. Everything is up. I mean, let's be realistic here. Now, I'm a real person like you. I'm not sitting here in some corporate office shooting a YouTube video for the sole purpose of making money, right? Like for the corporate donors or whatever, okay? Which is why you'll hear me talk about things like how bad the inflation is and how everybody is struggling to pay rent and mortgage and the insurance rates go up and all of the crap that we have to deal with on the regular because I'm in the real world living with everybody else. The only difference is I'm just a guy that so happens to know a very lot about televisions and knows exactly how to whistleblow on the industry to show you when something is not what it seems, the Sony A95L being that. It's a great TV, but it's no king. That being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching The Number One Brand in Honesty. I recommend the television, but at a fair price. And $3,000, I'm sorry, just isn't it. Until the next video, I'll see you guys later.